So like always, we'll start the chapter with some definitions that we gotta define first. And here's what perfect competition is. It's pretty much an industry where we have a lot of firms that are uh, there to sell identical products to buyers. And there are no restrictions to, ent to entry into the industry and established firms have no advantage over new ones. And lastly, seller and buyers are well informed about prices. So for example, in this kind of situation, in perfect competition, a good example would be um, the retail industry where you buy in, you where they uh, where these firms would sell their clothes. It's pretty easy to get into the in, to get into the industry. It's just really competitive. So next thing you gotta ask is how does perfect competition arise? Well, perfect competition arises when a firm's uh, minimum efficient scale is small uh, relative to the market demand. So there is room for many firms in the industry. Now, each firm is perceived to produce a good or service that has no unique characteristics. So customers don't care which firm they buy from. Now, again, that is really uh, that is really similar to what we have in the retail industry, uh, unless you count brands as uh, a way to differentiate between the two. But uh, when you're going to the mall to buy clothes, you pretty much just go going there to buy clothes. Uh, the clothes are the same, it's something you wear, unless you care about brand, which we won't talk about, but uh, each firm that sells clothes has no unique attributes. There, There's no clothes that are better than the other, so you don't really care which, uh, which, which store you buy from. Now, uh, definition on price takers. In perfect competition, each firm is a price taker. Now that means that a firm can influence the price of a good or service. So no single firm can influence price. It must take the equilibrium market price. Now each firm's output is a perfect substitute for the output of the other firms. So the demand for each firm's output is perfectly elastic. So what are the, what are the goals of each firm? Well, the goal of each firm is to maximize economic profit. And that means having uh, total revenue minus cost. Now, the total cost is the opportunity cost of production, and that includes normal profit. Total revenue equals price times quantity sold, which is P times Q in this case. Marginal revenue is the change in total revenue resulting from a one unit increase in quantity sold. Now, we have some graphs that I want to look at, and... Uh, this first graph really illustrates a firm's revenue concepts. So this graph, what all this all this graph shows is the market demand and market supply uh, that determine the market price the firm must take. So as you can see here, we have this uh, supply curve and this demand curve. Now the point at which they intersect will give us a market price. Now this market price is pretty much the price that. Uh, that the firm must take. Now, for this firm, this firm is selling shoes. So, uh, for each uh, 9,000 shoes, uh, the price that they're selling these shoes are is $25 each. Oops. So, the next graph we're going to talk about is the total, total revenue curve. And this is the relationship between total revenue and quantity sold. So you know that the quantity of shoes um, or thousands of shoes sold per day is 9,000. So in each day, the amount of money that we make, the total revenue uh, dollars per day, which I should probably write here, the dollars per day, total revenue per day, is 225,000 uh, and for the last graph so for the last graph wait, hold on hold on a minute so there's uh, they're selling nine shoes per day it's actually two hundred and twenty five dollars per day and not two hundred twenty five thousand thought it was a thousand but yeah two hundred twenty five thousands per day if nine shoes are nine pairs of shoes are sold per day so this last graph uh, gives us the demand for uh, for shoes it's pretty much the marginal revenue curve now this curve just shows that a firm can sell any quantity it chooses at the market price and um, 
for this for our case, uh, we wouldn't really want to sell more than uh, nine thousand shoes. I don't even know what scale this is on. So this is dollars per shoe. Dollars per shoe. So at any rate, we don't want to sell more than uh, we want. We don't. We don't want to sell more than nine thousand shoes. We don't want to sell less. We just want to sell at the intersection. So uh, firms can sell at any quantity they want, but then the most efficient uh, quantity to sell at is is nine thousand shoes because that's where we intersect. So here's some last pointers for perfect competition. The demand for a firm's product is perfectly elastic. And we're talking about the firm here. So in other words, one firm's shoes is a perfect substitute for another firm's shoes. So for example, having Nike and Adidas, they are two different firms and they have two different brands of product. And one firm's shoes, Nike, is perfectly is a perfect substitute for Adidas shoes, and Adidas shoes is perfect a substitute for Nike. Now, market demand is not perfectly elastic because shoes is a substitute for some other good. That is, uh, in this case, what I'm saying that we can't really substitute shoes in the general terms because there's no good other substitute other than sandals, but I guess that's not really a really good substitute. Well, there's no example that perfectly shows us. There's no perfect example such as uh, Nike, and Adidas in terms of a more general category such as shoes. So uh, the firm wants to make economic profit, however it does face some limitations. So here's some things that they gotta decide. They gotta decide how to produce at minimum cost, they gotta decide how much to produce, the quantity, and they gotta decide whether to enter or exit a market. And we start by looking at a firm's output decision and that is where I'll stop for this video. In the next video, we'll talk about uh, this profit maximizing output. But for now, please rate, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next video.